Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. Don't forget, if you like the video, click on like and subscribe and talk about it on chat lines, wherever it is your social media activities and help us to grow and help more people. I'll talk to you soon. Harkis says, but then I have been uh, with only one woman entire life. Been in happy, straight relationship and I was always disgusted thinking about same-sex relationships. Never interested. What happened to part two? I have part one, I have part three, and I don't have part two. It's okay. And then part four, it says, this thought never disturbed me during the last one month of HOCD. It did come to my mind, but I never took it seriously. I was recovering by doing everything you've been saying. Okay. And nothing was scaring me anymore. But today, all of a sudden, it became something very intrusive. It makes me feel that I am gay because that happened when I was four, five, six year old. <laughs> yeah, four, four, five, six year old. You were not even a human being yet, <laughs> pretty much just a child. You, you don't even consider anything uh, of any age of childhood, adolescence, because you just don't know enough. You're being bombarded with all kinds of things. You're trying to understand things and you're being given all kinds of misdirections from all different, so much irrelevant information that is being plastered throughout the world to everybody and confusing the hell out of them, especially when they're children and they're not teaching them about their psyche, the movement of the mind and the brain and how it works. So they get all these information and all these so-called so options that are being bestowed upon them and being encouraged that in order to make a certain group comfortable, they're plastering all that information as an offering and it can have a negative connotations to people who are not inclined towards different sexuality and when they're so young it could confuse the hell out of them and it's actually detrimental to their healthy inclination uh, people have different inclinations sexual orientations uh, but trying to encourage and inform them of all these options eventually the ones who are not interested in any of these options and everything is just the way it is for them, they become confused by too much information at the wrong age, which they cannot digest. So they're actually planting things in their heads, which reconditions their heads without it being their natural inclination. And that is a, a tragedy that actually uh, causes harm uh, while it's trying to make uh, situations and social situations and acceptance comfortable for a certain inclinations which they have been uh, mistreated uh, throughout the history but it also has a different negative connotations for the ones who don't need to be exposed to uh, that all different uh, sexualities at that young age and so uh, the balance should uh, you know more of a um, methodical um, approach should be taken so when you're trying to do good for some group it will not end up damaging the psyche of other groups so it doesn't matter four five six years old eight nine ten eleven it doesn't matter you're a child you're a child you don't know shit uh, you, now you want to go back and try to ocd and hocd hocd is subset of ocd and you your brain is moving on the negative thoughts and the anxiety level is so high and you're trying to grab on to what you love to be which causes the anxiety to be higher and the level of doubting goes higher and the French call it in fact call OCD doubting disease of course they have a little accent say le doubting disease but it's, <laughs> it's a doubting disease which means you doubt everything but just because you doubt doesn't mean that the facts are not facts and you're doubting that makes the facts change to something that you're introducing. No, it just means your brain is on the negative run 
and it's it's doubting it's a signaling system is malfunctioning so constantly the intrusive thoughts that show up in your head which shows up in every human being's head all the time but we have a system in the basal ganglia area the midbrain striatum there is a lever called caudate nucleus which is designed to shut down the intrusive thoughts based on your values known values in you and when it malfunctions and the signaling system does not shut down the intrusive thoughts as it's designed when the uh, when the uh, prefrontal cortex suggests these things then you um you know you think oh it's not shutting down so it must mean something no it doesn't it's just a malfunction so Aki says, I'm worried because it never worried me for the last 24 years. Oh, <laughs> listen, <laughs> it's like saying, oh, um, uh, I have a diarrhea now, but uh, I'm worried because I never had diarrhea. Well, so what? We all get diarrhea one time or another, and then it cures up. We learn what to do with it, and we manage it, and we bring back to the proper chemical balance, and the diarrhea goes away. So why are you freaking out? Just like your body malfunctions, your brain malfunctions. You got to help it now to regain its balance and function as it's designed to function for you. Different programs, different designs for different people. But whatever it is, it can malfunction just as your biology malfunctions. But when it comes to the brain, people think that the brain is, wow, so reliable. No, there are more mental uh, issues and mental uh, illnesses in the world and there are physical illnesses you're in better hands uh, you know uh, physically uh, more durable than your mental psychology is so it's part of being a human being we malfunction we malfunction our kidneys and liver in stomach and in intestine heart everywhere you know these organs all malfunctions now, the brain, it's even malfunctions more because it's a material process, but it's no physical production. It's a virtual production, and that virtual production is based on all these connections of neurons that are creating thoughts based on the conditionings and the information seep through your consciousness. So there's lot more possibilities for getting all mixed up and messed up. All it takes is a couple of glitches here and there and a fear and anxiety and then suddenly and a malfunction in the signaling system, suddenly you've got OCD, all kinds. Responsibility OCD, harm OCD, i got to touch this 50 million times when my father dies OCD, then HOCD, pedophile OCD. What does it mean? Every time you think about or you know harm us, you, you want to harm yourself or harm somebody else. Every time you think that you want to murder somebody, does it mean you become a murderer? No, it doesn't. Look, guys. You all end up wanting to seek assurances and thinking because some intrusive thought showed up. Now it has changed you from something that you were to something that you were never were and you don't want to be. It's like saying the ships that happen to show up on the ocean say, now that I've arrived and I'm visible, now you, the ocean, is me. I am sh your ship now. Because I have arrived. And the ocean says, God damn it. Your whole presence and visibility is based on the fact that there is an ocean. You're not an ocean. You just happen to use the screen and the stage of the ocean to be able to be visible. That's all. But you're not the ocean. You'll never be an ocean. You can never change the ocean. You just happen to be able to travel on this path that has been available to you because uh, I allowed you to be on this ocean. Because of me, you can travel. And that's it. It's a travel path. But you don't change me because you happen to exist here. Same thing. You're the ocean. And thoughts are the ships. They come and go. Just because they come and become visible on the screen of your head, that doesn't mean that it's now suddenly they, their presence, have changed you and you become them. You've become the thought. The thought is a ship. It comes and goes. you got to let them come and go. 
You don't think just because a ship has become visible on, the, on your ocean and the ocean has become a ship now. The ocean doesn't change. You just let them come and go, watch them come and go, watch them come and go. They have different commodities on them, different things on them, oil, sulfur, wheat, paper, wood, lumber. They all come and go. But regardless of what they're carrying with themselves, that doesn't change the ocean. The ocean is there, will be there, was there. And these things can simply have the possibility of passing through. You are the ocean. Hmm. Thoughts are the ships. They can come and go and they don't do fuck all to the ocean. Hmm. You allow them, you allow them, let them be. They cannot change you. You are the actuality that allows these thoughts to present their existence, ideas, suggestions, blink in and blink out. That's all. Don't you know? freak out. A ship showed up. I'm a ship now. No. It's got wood on it, so I'm a tree now. No. It's an idea. Let them come and go. You're the ocean. That doesn't change. The ships change. They come and go. Let them go. You hold on to them. Oh, ship. Now, now you're interacting with it. You're stopping it from moving on. You recognize it. Yeah, okay, your ship, you're full of shit. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Manure, go. And many things in our world is manure. It's wood, lumber, cars. You don't need it. You can consider it manure. Let them all go. You have no need for them. Hmm? You choose. There's a thought about something you like, like horses. You like horses. Ah, yeah. Nice. Okay, you entertain that thought. Otherwise, let them go. If it's not your preference, if it's not your choices, let them go. You go to the bazaar, so many products out there offering to buy this, buy that. You don't buy it off them. You just walk away, walk about until you find something that you find it interesting. Then maybe you negotiate. Otherwise, you pass by all the other little boots and little stores and bazaar that offering all kinds of products that you don't need. So just watch them and go. Allow them to be there. That's what the bazaar is all about. Everything is there, but you don't have to choose them. Just because you saw them, they're there. That doesn't mean you got now got to interact with it. Now you got to choose it. Now you have to use it. No. This is a world, everything exists in it. And your brain gets to know about this everything. And then it gets all that information and makes thoughts with it. But you're the boss. Brain has no power to make anything to become actuality. Only you can. But you've been duped to think the brain is more power. The brain is you. It's bigger than is more. You are the brain. No. Brain is not you. It's part of you. It works for you. So you're the boss. You ignore what you want to ignore and let them go. Accept that the brain can make thoughts and accept that thoughts can exist, can come and go. You don't have to be bothered by them no matter what their content is, is all irrelevant to you. If it's not based on your choices and preferences, it's all irrelevant to you. And who chooses that? You are the one who decides what's your vetoes, what's your choices. Not by thoughts and suggestions and ideas. You live by your vetoes and by your choices. Okay, now let me go on to next Subscribe on my channel, visit my channel, and go through the videos that you might be interested in. Mindatseekstruth.com, making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype and discuss what's concerning you. I'll talk to you soon.